Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer, Jennifer Gilmore, and I'm an author and advocate for women in abusive relationships. If you've been watching, I've been recording a Life After Abuse mini-series and discussing different um, subjects that really have been an impact to me. So, um, subjects I've already covered is loneliness and support. And this time I want to talk about recovery and we will go on to healthy relationships in the next video. Um, the reason why I'm doing these clips um, is to bring awareness to the sort of side of um, life after abuse that people don't really talk about. Um, we can get stuck in discussing what we have been through but not take that step forward and come out of that. It's okay to reflect on what we've been through um, but I think it's really important to move forward in recovery. Um, <clears throat> so I do want to say I'm going to be referencing a couple of things so I've got some paperwork with me um, but I feel it's really important because um, I have been on quite a journey. So if you haven't tuned into any of my videos I um, have experienced domestic abuse and it was predominantly coercive control. I have been out of the relationship for several years and only really in the last two years have I felt that oh there's <sighs> sort of that really big step move forward for my mental health and um you know they say time is a healer but I've put a lot of work into um handling triggers and things like that um the biggest difference that happened to me was going on a program and if we just take you back a little bit I came out of the relationship and it was about nine months after that I went on an awareness course and then into a 14 week program and in my area which is in Hull East Yorkshire it's called the Brave Group and that's run by Hull DAP but it's actually a part of um, Rockpool's recovery toolkit program and um, I've just got a quick flyer and leaflet here. Um, Rockpool are basically um, there's that deliver training so you can facilitate these programs and they have put together a domestic abuse recovery toolkit. Now I went on this program thinking, I don't know what I didn't know what I thought. I went on there because people um, said this could help me and also because um, I think my, my new partner really wanted me to take those steps forward and get that help and support. Um, so I went on um, this recovery program and I really felt that I wouldn't fit in with everyone but I actually did fit in and I realised that um, there isn't a stereotype around victims of domestic abuse, it can happen to anyone and I think sometimes um, people have come up to me and said you don't look like somebody who would have been in an abusive relationship or you know that kind of person to accept that kind of behavior but it's really not that simple so i went on this program and ultimately ultimately at the end of the program i had this really big change in my mindset but i want to stop you there and go to some of the tools that i developed um because of this program um so one of the things that I learned along the way was that you don't need to hold on to the rope. And when I say this, I mean that the abuser is there pulling on a rope and guess what? I'm pulling on it as well. Um, and that means like they're sending me an email. I'm opening it. I'm responding to it. I'm, get, I'm having that emotional response. Um, it also means that I allow him to have that kind of control over me, even though I'm not in that relationship anymore. And sometimes it's not safe to to stop responding, but um, after quite a long time, I discovered that I didn't need to, one, read the emails, and two, put myself into that situation of being upset, hurt, and responding. Um, so this, the first step for me was not responding. I would still read the emails, um, just in case, because I felt that maybe it would open up um, any sort of channels that if I was going to be made unsafe and then what happened was um, I had a, a coach basically read the emails to decipher it to get that message so if there were any kind of um, things to do with the kids or whatever she could say this is his message the rest is just verbal abuse and that was really helpful because I didn't have to read it and put up with hearing it anymore so I let go of the rope and eventually it became where I just didn't need to do it anymore. I didn't need to even respond, um, 
you know, to those emails just because of the situation. The, the other thing that I came up with, and this is a bit different, was that me and my husband, now husband, um, I, I used to get quite upset and I was in the early stages dealing with flashbacks and triggers and I can still do it. Um, but it, we were very much submerged still into this kind of life after abuse relationship and dealing with this person. So um, he said what would be a good idea is if we have a code word and uh, that way I am in control of whether I continue this conversation because sometimes I just didn't want to talk about it anymore and also on the other hand he didn't want to talk about it either. So we came up with the word banana and apparently he used this when he was a manager at work so if he had a tricky customer they could just say banana and it takes away that you know, a feeling of anxiety to say, I don't want to talk about this. So we use the keyword banana and I would say, I just don't want a banana split. I don't want a banana smoothie. Um, I did all that. <laughs> and it really, really helped in my recovery. The other tool that I came up with is um, sort of giving permission. And that's allowing myself, giving myself permission to have time, to look after myself, to treat myself maybe even just buying standard things like clothes and that had to be a gradual uh, balance to get away from asking permission. The other thing that I always do is constantly develop, so that's even now, That's um, that will always go on forever, is constantly developing on myself and looking at self-help books <laughs> um, and also keeping focused. If I don't do the work and put this, the work into myself, I will not have that focus and I could go back into a place where I don't really want to be. It is hard work because at the end of the day, it's really hard to keep focused um, and to not sway or move into a different direction, but it's totally worth it. And sometimes I allow myself, again, going back to giving myself permission, I will allow myself to go, today I'm allowed to cry, today I'm allowed to think about this. I'm able to sort of give myself permission. So all of these tools that I sort of develop in myself came from that Rockpool Recovery Toolkit program. And it was because I learned about the types of abuse and how things are going through the CBT therapy and also giving myself the opportunity to move forward that I realised that I needed to help myself. Um, also, I want to mention that we were given a self-esteem checklist. So I'll just briefly show you. Um, this is the original one I did in 2014 and 15 and I have another one in 2017 but to have a look at some of the items on the list um, things like the word capable we had to basically rate ourselves between zero and three zero being almost never and three being almost always and capable for me in back in 2014 was one Come to 2019 and it's three. Um, being free, one and then two. And it co it con continues. Controlling become was two and now is zero. And self-aware was two and now three. And I actually have done over the period of time this um, self-esteem checklist three times. So in 2014-15, when I became a facilitator of the programme in 2017, and also in 2019 last year when I re-looked, I wanted to evaluate my progress. And to be honest, I'm really proud of myself because I have come a long way. To sort of go on with that course and programme, the last thing um, that we were sort of looking at were future goals in that programme. And I realised that I'd spent the last 14 weeks with other women who had experienced domestic abuse, very similar, could have every once exes could have been mine, realising that behaviour and pattern. And that's when I decided that I needed to bring awareness and it was more for emotional abuse and coercive control. And so that links into um, Isolation Junction. That was my first um, novel. I'm very proud of this because it was really hard for me to write. Um, but this really helped in my recovery as well because it was very th therapeutic. I started off with my experiences, built on it with other people's experiences and then ended up weaving a plot and storyline and having the characters um, in the book to allow me to do that. So I found that very, very helpful. 
But before I go, I want to say that you can allow yourself to find the tools, to find the different ways to recover and you deserve it. And for me, that is the most important thing is that everybody deserves deserve to have that feeling. Um, I'm going to go now because I've <laughs> slightly overrun. But everything that I've said, I felt that is very important and it's completely valid. If anybody has any questions about anything that I've said, you know, please do get in touch with me, jennifergilmore.com. And before every video I end with, I always say, together we are louder. Thank you for watching.